Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and today I've got a bunch of nondescript looking bags, but let me explain what they all are. So, it should come as no surprise that I'm a big fan of mythology from all around the world, and today we have some nice little surprises from Paymaster Games, and Paymaster Games specifically focuses on a lot of North and South American traditional mythological folkloric, and actual historical units in addition to all that. So today we're going to look at specifically a couple of Mesoamerican, South American, um, Latin American, whichever America you want to call it, but specifically some of the models they have from that neck of the woods. So without further ado, we're going to start popping bags here and take a look at a couple of these. Now I'm not 100% sure where each of these come from specifically, so I'm not going to pretend to become some kind of an expert on all of that, but I do want to at least focus on the models because that's what I like. So this first one here is the Cape Lobo, and with a name like that he is obviously going to be from a Spanish-speaking country, and he is a bit of an aardvark or an anteater, but i got to say, resin is quite sharp. He is a single cast, which is always nice. I have absolutely no idea what kind of colors an anteater or an aardvark are going to be. Can I get him on his base? So he is on a 40 millimeter base. Could we squeeze him on something smaller? Possibly. Let's see if I can grab a typical stand-in human to give you guys an idea. So he's a little bit bigger. A little bit more imposing than a regular human. But I do appreciate the fact that he is a single cast piece. Very nice. We'll take a look at all these once they're all finished. Next up we have a two pack right here. These are the Ewa, which is the Wear Puma. And the Ewa has both a human and non-human form. So this one is cast in metal. You can see here, despite the thinness of the pieces, it's still quite nicely cast in, and I'm hoping that I'm not supposed to, okay, I was afraid this might be a ponytail, but no, it looks like it's actually going to be the tail for the puma form, or I could be wrong, I don't know, we'll see, she's at least mostly in one piece, how she stack up size-wise, not too bad, but obviously our wear form is going to be quite a bit larger here, well, she has a tail. Okay, I have no idea where this is supposed to go. Well, I'll figure it out. Claws are a separate piece. So she's supposed to go on the 40 millimeter base. One of these days, I'm going to give the going native rules a spin. Because it seems I've slowly been acquiring just enough of these models that I actually could play it officially incorrectly. Might be worth trying out. I want to say it's based on the Song of Blades and Heroes engine. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. So that was our Ewa. We'll put them all together, so never fret. Next up is one of our Aztec serpents. This is the Flame Serpent. I know that. Because he's got that kind of fiery look to his body. Now, I like the serpents that they put out. They put out a couple of them. Uh, what is it? Zioquatl? Zioquatl. I don't know. It's the Flame Serpent, though, I know that. I've been scratching my head on how to paint this one. I'm thinking just red with gold embellishments on his tail. I'm not sure yet. So he is two pieces. Nicely cast as well. I actually have another Tetelcoatl here, in case you haven't seen the first time I put one up. But I figure I have all of my Rampart Aztec-looking ruins from Protoss or Archon. And I thought having a set of these guys would make for a cool looking entrance to the temple. So he's a bit bigger, bulkier, thicker than the flame serpent. Obviously neither of them have their heads and he needs to have his tail attached as well. Not as big as their Quetzalcoatl, but Quetzalcoatl was pretty huge. And then there's this big old sucker over here. And this should come as no surprise to anybody here. Ooh, if I can unwrap him. This is Yahui. And you guessed it, it's a big giant reptile. He's he's pretty big. So obviously he's a turtle. With his big, I want to say they're obsidian blades. He was a god of death, wasn't he? I'm not sure. 
It almost looks like he does have feathers. His body is covered in feathers, as opposed to the traditional scales. But then again, he's a god, and he's allowed to be covered in whatever he feels like. Oh, but one of his fangs is broken. Hopefully I can find it in the bags. Well, it's not a huge issue. Big, long tail. If he's covered in feathers, I think I don't have to play by any kind of rules of having him painted up like a regular everyday turtle. He's quite big. He's going to be on a 50 millimeter base. Whee! I wonder if I should paint like patterns on his underbelly. That might be fun. And finally, last but not least, and perhaps one of the coolest, is an Incan pack llama. Because there's just never enough pack animals. You can see he's got his little packs of goodies here. I'm not sure where this one's supposed to I think it's hanging off the side like that. Don't you want a pack llama? I need a battle yak too from Shield Wolf. And then we'll just have, you know, well equipped pack animals and we'll get out some of those dungeons and doggies player characters and we'll just have ourselves an animal adventure. Okay, I'm going to stop rambling right now. I'm going to get all this stuff put together and that way we can take a good look at it and see how these models stack up. So let's start with our wear Jaguar here. We have the two models. I put the human version on a little bit smaller base and figured I'm going to use her shoulder to get the ponytail attached as well just to make things a little bit easier and I cheated and drilled some holes to plug her feet in. The 30 millimeter base just seemed too big for her but then again I feel like the 40 millimeter base for the wear form is a little bit large too. Size wise she's a little on the shorter scale but she looks kind of young too and she's you know an undressed peasant so who knows what do I know. So I'm grabbing a couple other models. Now obviously our Frostgrave model is on a smaller base but most of the Frostgrave humans are about the same size, a Mantic Basilian. And obviously the wear form, if I can fit everybody on the screen here, is going to be a little bit bigger. There we go. As it should be. But when you get into more of the larger gaming scale stuff, it doesn't seem as impressive in terms of size. But still I think it's going to fit in. And then there's, you know, outliers like this Protoss. Oh gosh, what was it even called? Empire's a man? Anyway, this is their pre-star side resin line, but she's a whole other story. And then if you get into stuff like Conquest, it's like, <laughs> they're, they're literally giants at that point. So that's our Wear Jaguar friends here. Grabbing some of the other stuff. So our Cape Lobo, who we've already seen, but we'll put him back in here. So we cleaned off his base a bit more. That's about how big I would imagine. He looks big enough to be intimidating with those claws. The, of that size, he probably would be. We got our snakey snakes ready to go. And I'm thinking I'm going to do at least our stone snake up in very bright mosaic-like colors. It seems like it'd be a fun one to paint lots of blues and reds in there. Our feathery fire friend here, probably some reds. Reds and oranges, maybe? I was thinking, you know what would be really cool? is especially with the stone snakes well both of them all of them is getting a bunch of the 15 not 50 millimeter sorry well 50 millimeter works too but like some of the 170 second scale caesar miniatures or the old Ravel stuff but i know caesar at least is in production and they've got like the incas and the mayans and the aztec warriors i think having this stuff would be really awesome to have them hanging around and fighting with on the table because then you really would have a sense of you know, drastic, dramatic, imposing scale. And then you got stuff like our buddy Yahui here. Yahui? I'm not even sure how that's going to be pronounced. And he is a fairly big model. Now, when it comes time to actually get him painted, I'm probably going to drill a hole and pin him to the base, but I'm going to probably save that for the very end. He's a big turtle, snake, viper, hybrid looking thing. It's definitely an interesting look. So yeah, he's got like these scale-like feathers all over him. I am not sure how I'm going to go and approach that. I spent way more time than I care to admit looking online at pictures of various Aztec mythological monsters and paintings and reliefs and things like that. So 
We'll see how that turns out, but he's definitely up my alley. And finally we have our llama, who I actually had to go and look at actual pictures. No, no, it's not a llama, it's an alpaca, wasn't it? I don't even remember, but I've been looking at pictures of domesticated animals of South America to get a good idea of how to figure out how he's going to be painted. So, definitely some fun models from Paymaster Games, and I am quite looking forward to seeing their new stuff coming out as well. So these should hopefully tide me over until that time. With that said, this is High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures, and thanks for watching, and check their Paymaster stuff, and we'll be back with more soon. See you later. Bye-bye.